Okay, I'm Robert Barron. I am a professor, uh, the Spears Professor of Management or Entrepreneurship at Oklahoma State University. And it's a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to talk about our research. And I hope that a few things I say will be helpful to you. Uh, why did we do this research and uh, what got me interested in this topic? Let me go back just a bit and say that I believe that our primary mission as faculty in entrepreneurship, as researchers in entrepreneurship, is to help entrepreneurs, either present entrepreneurs, current ones, or future ones, our students. And uh, from that point of view, which I believe passionately, uh, that we do need to give them accurate information that they can use. It's very easy to transmit what we think we know to students, but in fact, uh, we don't always know that. We, what we do know is what successful entrepreneurs tell us, which is wonderful. We should listen to these people because they've been there and done that. But uh, as a psychologist by training for many years ago, I understand the limits of our cognitive systems. Memory is far from perfect. Uh, we tend to be influenced by many, many factors that are not related to the decisions we're making, uh, such as past experience, our current moods, believe it or not. And so uh, if we assume that what entrepreneurs tell us is actually 100% accurate, we may be doing a disservice to our students. And basically, here's how I illustrate this in my own class, just very briefly. I do what I call the 100 entrepreneurs experiment. And so I ask students to imagine 100 successful entrepreneurs are in a room, and we ask each of them to tell us the secret of their success. Why had they moved from an idea to an actual company to success? And then when we do that, I ask the students after a while, and they discuss this, how many answers would you get to that question of <laughs> the secret of their success from 100 entrepreneurs? And as we talk about it, they realize that you might get two or 300 answers because entrepreneurs themselves don't know perfectly why they succeeded. Nobody would. So that illustrates to them why, in addition to listening to very successful entrepreneurs, we also have to do systematic research so we can find out what is really out there and transmit accurate and useful information to our students. There is a growing literature in the field of entrepreneurship indicating that although entrepreneurs, we love the fact that entrepreneurs are enthusiastic, they're very upbeat people, there's a downside to that. And the downside is that if you are totally uh, optimistic and just up all the time, you will do things like ignore uh, contradictory information. You will be over optimistic. Uh, basically, you will think you can do more in a given period of time than you really can. And I could go on and on and on. So yes, being upbeat and positive is a plus in many cases, but it also has a downside. And one of the downsides, uh, and this is what we hypothesized, is that if people are really upbeat and if uh, they believe in themselves, which by the way in entrepreneurship we use the term self-efficacy, which to me means that I believe that if I start any task, I can complete it successfully, which is very interesting. My wife tells me I suffer from this because I think I can fix everything around the house and uh, maybe I can't. Okay, uh, so if in fact entrepreneurs are, really believe in themselves and they're very optimistic, and they may actually then choose goals which are realistically unattainable. There's a giant literature on goal setting, and what the literature suggests <clears throat> is that the more difficult and challenging a goal is, the better people's performance, but that's up to a point. Once you get to the point where you are choosing goals you can't possibly reach, the result turns out to be discouragement, or reduction in motivation, and to put it simply, people give up. They just give up. So we wanted to understand if entrepreneurs, because of their very high belief in themselves, self-efficacy, because of their tendency to be very optimistic and positive, if they would be likely to choose goals that are truly unattainable. So that was, the, that was the main thrust of the research, because we thought if, in fact, we find that entrepreneurs do that, we can do something about it in our courses and caution students about this kind of pitfall which get in the way of very good ideas. There is a counter, but uh, you know, our concern was really with the fact that they set over-ambitious goals. I think entrepreneurs in general, from what we see in the literature and what we know from personal experience, tend to set very ambitious goals. Of course, there might be some who set under-ambitious goals, 
but uh, you wonder and then why they're an entrepreneur because if you don't have a dream and you're not looking forward to success it would be kind of strange to become an entrepreneur this is a personal view but uh, you know back to the study we thought well if in fact entrepreneurs set overambitious unattainable goals what can be done to stop that prevent that or mitigate it and uh, there's a very big literature in several fields on what's called self-regulation which is just what it sounds like uh, sometimes people call it willpower uh, sometimes people call it discipline but the idea is that we all regulate our own behavior and for different reasons often to reach goals and we thought that if in fact entrepreneurs could be very high in what's called self-control this is the ability basically to stop when you should stop, go when you should stop, and understand your own behavior, that that might help them uh, reduce this tendency to set overambitious goals. So the basic idea is people who are high in self-control should do a better job of restraining themselves from setting these overly uh, ambitious goals. We began first with a, a well-established measure of self-efficacy. This is a questionnaire entrepreneurs can fill out in a couple of minutes. And basically it says, uh, whatever I try to do, I can do, whether it's come up with new ideas for my products, uh, develop a customer base. Uh, and this is a well-validated instrument, which has been shown to, to really tap into entrepreneurs' belief in themselves. Uh, the second thing we did is actually a measure of self-control, which has been used in, uh, for many years in many different investigations. And it seems to, it seems to really uh, indicate to what extent people can regulate their own behavior. To what extent they can, for example, if they're on a diet, they can avoid the temptation of sweet desserts or whatever it is they're trying to attain, whatever goal, they can stay on track to that goal and not allow themselves to be uh, distracted. So we assume that if in fact it's true that entrepreneurs' uh, belief in themselves leads them to choose uh, very, very difficult and perhaps unattainable goals, that self-control might help them to uh, mitigate that, to restrain themselves from setting unattainable goals. And that was sort of the gist of the research. Uh, because if we can restrain people from setting unattainable goals and it does no good, there's no point. We looked at performance of their companies and our uh, hypothesis here was that the better they were at restraining these unattainable goals, the more they would be able to focus on the goals they can attain and the performance of their companies would be enhanced. And actually, that's what we found. Uh, the question of how we turn these findings and this research into practical implications is one that I really care about. Because you may recall that when I began, uh, I said that our major goal, our major responsibility is to help current and future entrepreneurs. And uh, so if we do research and there's no practical implications of it, we, we can ask ourselves why we're doing the research. I think this study does have, this research does have practical implications. Uh, first of all, can you train people to be high in self-efficacy? You can help them to do this. Uh, give people the success experiences, they begin to get a little more confident about their abilities. In terms of self-control, there is actually quite a bit of research on this and how you can teach people to regulate their own behavior. But without getting into this in detail, I think that the key uh, implication of our research is that it can feed back into what we teach students. We do warn them about a lot of pitfalls along the way. I don't think up to this point, certainly not in the courses I've taught, that we warn them about setting overambitious goals. So I think uh, if we can do that, we might save them from one more potential pitfall that will derail them and prevent them from attaining the success they really want.